Welcome to Dupo Remo. Dupo Remo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that is kind of interesting. I, I just w- was thinking about that. You know, that's one of the things that I thought that as much as we aren't fans of Stephanie Meyer's writing and her style and stuff and what she tends to focus on, she sells just a shit ton of books. A because, metric shit ton. Yeah, because... I know, I measured it. <laughs> she'll she'll take an idea like a sci-fi idea about an alien invasion of the world and then turn it into a romance in an alien invasion of the world. Or she takes vampires versus werewolves from Underworld, turns it into a romance about vampires versus aliens. And maybe that's why there's less genres of movies that are aimed at women and more aimed at men because men see movies, women see less movies, but there's a bazillion books that are aimed at women versus very few that are aimed at men because women read books. It's like 10 to 1, you know, in in that. Because women are the one that do the, the book reading, whereas men do not. And there is a lot of books that are aimed at women. I hadn't thought of that. That's and, a good point. And Stephanie Meyer just freaking dipped her dipper down into the freaking boiling cauldron that's full of gold instead of just plain old soup. And you know and what? Scooped it out. Good for her, I guess. I don't care. But <laughs> I would rather there be a, a, a J.K. Rowling than a Stephanie Meyer. Because they're super passionate men who love Harry Potter and super passionate women that love Harry Potter. Yeah. And it seems to me that, that, you know, if you can please both. Yeah, it's always best if you can please both. But, you know, I, it, it, it's it's funny that it's it's an issue. And maybe it's not an issue. It shouldn't matter. But I think if they made, if Whedon had made his Wonder Woman movie. Um, it would have been sexist. <laughs> I, 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 like all superhero movies. Are. I'm sure some people would have said so. And that's fine because people can find whatever they want to find in anything. Yeah. You can find motivation to kill the president in Catcher in the Rye if you want to. But something that I hope comes out of Hunger Games that doesn't seem to be there in Twilight is a positive role model for girls. I mean, I think Bella is a friggin' disreputable, monstrous bitch. (laughs) But... Katniss Everdeen it seems like somebody that you could aspire to be like, to be strong. And she loves her sister enough to to do all this stuff. And she's smart. And she's able to uh, survive when other people cannot. And stand up for what she believes in and fight. And I, I know we've had this conversation a hundred times. Maybe not on the air. But had there been a Wonder Woman movie where somebody gave a crap about the Wonder Woman character, she could be somebody like that. Somebody who can stand up for everything that's innocent and beautiful and good. And yet she is a woman, you know what I mean? A woman mm-hmm. to aspire to be like. Right. Who can stand there side by side with Superman and Batman and hold her own and be respected by men as an equal. To me, that's that's feminism. That's that's what feminism should be. And we'll see. I mean, gosh, it would be a real shame if the Hunger Games movie turned out to be terrible. Yeah. Because we would have wasted all of this talk, but more importantly, <laughs> a wasted opportunity. And... I don't know. I, if, if they made a Wonder Woman movie, would these women that wouldn't go see a movie because it's based on a comic book go see it because it's a female protagonist? Or would they still stay away because, you know, it's, it's, it's the same superhero. kind of thing as... Batman or as, Spider-Man. Yeah, or Batman or Spider-Man. Or, or not, Elektra. Or, I don't think that Batman and Spider-Man have necessarily been repulsive, though, to women. Well, Batman can't have been if it made that much money. Yeah. Had to bring in a lot of women because there's only so many men out there to get uh, that kind of record-breaking money. Well, and, and that's a subject for another time. But like the Twilight movies, the women that go see them, they're all women. But they see them again and again and again. And that's what happened with Titanic. Yep. I, I think Titanic's appeal was broader. There were more men that were into Titanic But the women went again and again and again and again. And when Avatar came out, it was a little bit more evenly split. Although I think it was still more women-centric. Even though it's it's a war flick, a science fiction flick with aliens and subtitles and politics and stuff in it. 
and and correct me if I'm wrong. You you seem to be dubious. Do you not think that more no, women dug have Avatar no, than men? I have no idea. I would have guessed that it was more men that dug Avatar, but I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know, I I don't know. I'm not in the world anymore, so I can't really say. But you remember what Titanic was like, and it was 13 to right. Stephanie Meyer aged women that went to that again and again and again and girls and and then they wept and they they lived what Kate Winslet lived and fell in love with Leonardo DiCaprio and lost him again and again and again and and were swept away to this this romantic time that no longer exists and you know I I never had a problem with that with the whole Titanic thing I know there were a lot of people that were just like ugh but if something speaks to you it speaks to you. And, and I know there are people that, that are spoken to, like you said, by Twilight. It addresses their needs or their their secret hearts, what they would like to be. And, and you know what? Whether you're a guy or a girl, everybody wants to feel attractive and have two equally appealing people fighting over them. Anybody would want that. It's like, wow, these two dudes in this case dig this girl so much that you know they're sparkling and werewolfing and at least one of them's taken off his shirt to try and get her attention every person wants to be that loved or needed or attractive or drawn to and and if it had been told in a different way maybe that would have spoken to me too i don't know yeah i think there's a way to take that story and make it so it speaks to you just emphasize the stuff that speaks to you at the very least and lessen the parts i mean if you really wanted to you could turn that story into a comic book story i mean the vampires that stephanie myers has they're they're like x-men they're like super fast super strong super beautiful and they all have like some kind of power that they can do with their mind like uh, edward reads people's minds uh, there's an x-men that does that as well <laughs> I can't remember what any of the other powers were. I think somebody was able to, like, calm down people with his mind. You could do it. You could totally take that story and turn it into a boy-centric story if you wanted to. Maybe that's what they'll do 100 years from now, like they're doing to every Jane Austen novel. They'll remake it differently. To be continued next time. Run while you still can! That gets my goat, or whatever this is ultimately called, is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative license. But yeah, you know, that's something that I've noticed these days, is that TV... Stop that. I'm trying to get closer to the mic. Can't do it while I'm speaking. You gotta go. But we can mute when you're... Yeah. My mic. When... But my mic picks up a noise like that all the way over here. It's not that far away. I need to urinate. Get to the point.